Hi guys, this is a video I get a lot of questions about and I just wanted to clarify some things. Older GM cars like my cousin Michael's Buick Skylark, my 68 Firebird, that Tempest right there which I'll be working on pretty soon. I got the suspension all done. It's just a matter of getting the engine fired up and the automatic replaced with 3 speed or 4 speed depends on what I get my hands on. Now, the alternators in those cars were externally regulated and the one currently in my Firebird is internally regulated. So, <clears throat> I get a lot of people asking how I did the conversion. I didn't do it myself, and I don't know if it's done all that well, but I did wire up this Datsun from scratch, so I will show you what goes where in order to make your alternator work. This post right here, I will include in the diagram. At the very end of the video, I'm gonna include a diagram and it's gonna show you where everything goes um, you could pause the video then and actually watch the entire thing or look it over compare notes Write them down if you have to take a screenshot, whatever um, This will go your battery in my case my batteries in my trunk, so I have extra leads going there, but Doesn't doesn't really concern anybody or anything so this will charge the battery right here This right here will jump back to the non switched so the constant hot this fat wire right here, terminal, terminal number two. And terminal number one has to go to a switch source. It is also what you will use for a idiot light on the dashboard. So what you're gonna do is somewhere, the light will go, well this wire will go through the light. So the way the alternator knows when to charge and when to stop charging is by reading the switched voltage. Now, I don't have an idiot light, so what this goes to is on a switched portion of my fuse box. So it's only hot when I turn on my ignition. And that's where that wire goes. Now, the reason this swap is a very simple swap is because the bolt centers for this bolt and that bolt are identical for the externally and internally, internally regulated GM alternators. So it was a direct swap for my Firebird, it bolted right on. Well, I'm also running 69 and up accessories, but should you be running the older 65, 66 accessories, it's just a matter of spacing it forward and aft until your pulleys line up so you don't throw belts. The other thing you gotta watch out for is there's different alternators they sell. They sell the one wire alternator, which a lot of hot rodders have been complaining about because you have to really wind them up to get them to charge it all. And then there's some newer ones that came out that people aren't complaining about and they're saying they work great. So your mileage may vary, I'm just letting you know that the three wire alternator is just, it's $50 for a lifetime warranty uh, alternator. You can get it replaced anytime. Most parts stores will sell it. I don't know how it works overseas, of course, if you're watching from another country. But there you go. The bolt centers are the same. It's a matter of bolting up. And I'm gonna reiterate again. This goes to the hot to charge the actual battery this jumps back to this one so I have it going to a non switch portion of my fuse box is where I have it going and then this goes to the switch portion but also can be interrupted by an idiot light so whenever the alternator stops charging and this is no longer 12 volts the 12 volts that's supplied through the ignition switch will then give a ground to the idiot light and it'll light up, letting you know that your alternator isn't supplying the 12 volts because it'll flow one way instead of being blocked. Now, the way you know your alternator is charging if you don't have an idiot light or if you just want to verify with your own two eyes and if you don't have a, a switch or a, a gauge anywhere on the dash is you read across the battery terminals with everything hooked up but not running and it should read 12 and a half volts, 12.4, 12.6, if it reads anything below a 12, your battery is dead. If it reads at 11.5 or lower, your battery is completely dead and you need to replace it because it won't even hold the charge at that point. But um, fully charging, it should read 13.5 to 14.5. So anything more than that and your alternator is faulty at the regulator side of things. It's just not doing things correctly. So if it reads 14.2, 14.4, you're doing good and you should charge your battery fairly soon. Well, here's the diagram as promised, and hope you all have a wonderful holidays, and stay safe out there. The roads are getting pretty crazy. You guys take care.